advantage to the Blue Devils. They've won 25 consecutive games on their home court. The Duke is struggling as it returns home tonight to take on the surging Virginia Cavaliers. And Joe Harris, who lit up Duke for a career-high 36 points in the Cavs' win against Duke last year. Welcome, everybody, to Big Monday, presented by Verizon. You're watching the ACC on ESPN tonight. It's the Virginia Cavaliers, 3-0 to start the conference season. All wins by double digits, taking on the 23rd-ranked Duke Blue Devils. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Big Monday. Sean McDonough along with Jay Billis, joined shortly by Janine Edwards. Delighted to have you with us. Duke is off to a 1-2 and two start in conference play after their loss Saturday at Clemson. It's the first time they've been below 500 in the league through three games, Jay, since 2006-2007. Everybody in the building asking you tonight, what's wrong with Duke? Well, Sean, they've had a hard time defending in the last three games, their ACC games, when they've been 1-2. and two, Duke is giving up 50% from the field. Yet they're only turning the ball over six times a game. So it's not like they're coughing the ball up and allowing their opponent to play ahead of their defense. This is against their defense. They've got to get tougher defensively, tougher on the boards, and their best players have to play well at the same time. They scored just 59 points Saturday in that loss at Clemson. And tonight, they'll have to go against the famous pack line defense that was made famous by Dick Bennett and now his son Tony Bennett coaching it to his Cavaliers. Well, this is an excellent defensive team. They're rugged at both ends of the floor, but especially on the defensive end. And the pack line defense is exactly what it sounds like. This is a containment defense that wants to keep you out of the paint. Everybody's in gaps, and they will put late pressure on a shot. They don't want to give up baseline. They want to drive you into the middle. They certainly won't, don't want to give up second shots, but we got to show you more of their defense this way. And this is a very good defensive team. They do not foul, do not put you on the line, but at the same time, they make everything difficult. As we go one-on-one, -on -one, Saturday against Clemson, Duke faced the best scoring defensive team in the country. Tonight in Virginia, they'll get the second best. Well, Virginia is an excellent defensive team, and they have found their identity. They're playing the way they want to play. And Duke, on the other end, has been good offensively during the season, but only shooting 40% in their three ACC games. UVA 12 and four overall. The test tonight will come for their freshman point guard, London Parentes. And Duke with Cook, Jones, Hood, Parker, and Jefferson starting for Coach K. And Duke in white controlled the tip, won by the freshman Jabari Parker. Rodney Hood, and now Parker. Parker being guarded by Akil Mitchell. And Mike Toby taking Emil Jefferson. That's a better matchup for Virginia. Parker with a shot clock at 14, rattles in a three. He's been struggling with his shooting lately, just 31% in the last four games. So that's a good sign for Duke. And a turnover. Virginia wanted to come into this game and handle pressure. Didn't do it particularly well on that first possession. Keel Mitchell turned it over at the offensive end. Nice offensive rebound by Jefferson. An open three for Hood. And the rebound yanked down by the freshman, Parentes. This is a solid offensive team. Virginia doesn't score a lot of points, but they take care of the ball. They run a lot of flare screens, baseline runners. Malcolm Brogdon, who thought he was fouled. Instead, it's out of bounds. Last touch by Jabari Parker. 20 to shoot for Virginia. Mike Krzyzewski, the winningest coach in NCAA history with 969 wins. Coming up at his 900th at Duke, he is 896 as coach here. You can expect Virginia to drive the ball. Duke has had a hard time staying in front and taking away straight line drives from opponents. And now a whistle and a foul on Rodney Hood. First foul. Against Hood and Duke, Tony Bennett in his fifth season, the last time they were 3-0 and in lead play was his first year, 2009-2010, but that season went south. They wound up 5-11 and in conference play. Joe Harris, short with the jumper. And you can expect Harris to look for his shot more. He had 16 points against NC State. 
Only took eight shots, but he only played 20 minutes. He's got to get more shots for Virginia to be at their best. Last year, Harris averaged just under 12 shots per game from the field. This year, that's seven and a half, and it's a big reason why his points per game have dipped from 16 a year ago to 10 this year. He missed the entire summer. Had a foot injury. Wanted to play USA basketball. It really took him out of preparing himself for this season. But he is starting to play like the old Joe Harris now. Good inside, short with it. He did a very nice first year playing for Duke. Sat out last year as a transfer from Mississippi State. But Brogdon did a really nice job defensively. And you're right, John. Hood has been magnificent over his last three games. And a UVA turnover. Brogdon's pass went off the hand of Harris and out of bounds. So UVA scoreless more than two minutes in. And Tony Bennett was a little bit concerned about how his team would handle what he called extreme pressure. He figured that Duke coming off a, an embarrassing loss at Clemson would come out and really try to put pressure all over the ball. Foul on the drive. Like Les Jones was ready to count the bucket. Looked like Matt Jones got away with a walk there when he first caught the ball, shuffled his feet before he took off. Just couldn't see it there, but that was a foul as he drove into the lane. He's a terrific defender. Even though he's a freshman, he is far more advanced than most freshmen are defensively. Understands where to be, understands health principles. Got a chance to be a really good player. Jones, as you saw, averaging just eight minutes per game. That was a lineup change made tonight by Coach K, trying to shake things up a little bit with their struggles of late. Jones into the lineup for Rashid Suleiman. Five nothing Duke. Duke bringing full court pressure after the made free throw. And this was a team that before the season I thought would be able to press quite a bit this year and really get out and pressure and force turnovers in the half court. But it hasn't really been that kind of team. Mike Krzyzewski told us before the game tonight he wanted to be that kind of team this year but he felt the rules changes the emphasis on freedom of movement made it harder for teams to press. So they backed off. Virginia still scoreless. And a tough jump hook wouldn't go. This is where Parker can be special is in transition. Joe Harris rebounded that miss. You would have thought he'd try to take that ball all the way to the basket instead of settling for a jump shot because he can get by people in transition, get all the way to the bucket. Mitchell off to Harris. He couldn't score with the left hand. Tony Bennett thought he was fouled. Three minutes gone by. Sharp contrast to Saturday when UVA raced to a 21-4 lead at NC State. And it was never threatened. They routed the Wolfpack by 31 points. Looks like a line change at the scorer's table. Duke coming in with five new players. And a travel called against Emile Jefferson. And here they come. A big hand for the starters who gave them a 5-0 lead. And with Josh Hairston and Tyler Thornton, two very good defenders. But this is not quite the potent scoring lineup for Duke. Just maybe a little bit better defensively, actually. Shade Suleiman on the court, Andre Dawkins, and Marshall Plumley. Plumley's played very little. They've been lacking a big man inside to be a defensive presence. Perhaps Plumley can provide that. Toby didn't see the pass coming from Harris, and it's the third Virginia turnover in three and a half minutes. Toby was just going down to set a screen for Parentes and just took his eye off the ball and Joe Harris has to see whether his the recipient is looking at him or not. Tyler Thornton one of their team captains. Dawkins. Tough runner. Kept alive for a moment by Plumley and then pulled off the floor by Harris. Brogdon trying to get them off the schneid. They still can't buy a bucket. Well, Virginia is getting some shots near the basket and shots that they normally make. And they work every day in practice on finishing. They have a drill where they just talk about finishing. And thus far in the game, they haven't finished opportunities. Dawkins at three. And that's a milestone. 200th of his career for Andre Dawkins, the graduate student. He's the 13th player in Duke history to make 200 or more career threes. 
If Andre Dawkins is not made to put the ball on the floor, those are like layups for him. A great three-point shooter. And a Duke foul gets us to immediate timeout with the Devils pitching a shutout. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Verizon. Holiday savings on the gifts everyone wants. And in part by the new 2014 Lexus GX. Dare to be spontaneous. And Constant Contact, helping small business do more business. Duke's off to an 8-0 start. Virginia looking for its fourth win in a row after they got pummeled at Tennessee late last year on December 30th. With more on that in the Virginia turnaround, we welcome in Janine Edwards. Well, that's right, Sean. And it was after that 35-point devastating loss that Joe Harris drove to Tony Bennett's house the next day, New Year's Eve, and he said, Coach, what can we do? What can I do to turn this around? And Bennett said he saw that as a turning point. He had been kind of waiting for his seniors, Akeel Mitchell and Joe Harris, to take ownership. And now they have. They've got more discipline on offense and more ruggedness on defense and leaders speaking up. Tony Bennett told us today Harris is not naturally very vocal but he's become more so lately and it's helped and that helps they're finally on the board as the lay in from Parentes makes it eight to two well, just getting the ball inside then a cut to the basket open things up and maybe that'll calm Virginia down a little bit on the offensive end and another line change for Duke as five different Blue Devils come to the scorers table to check in it's like a hockey game. Suleim on the bucket. The uh, Virginia basket was by Akeel Mitchell. Mike Toby a little bit long with it. Here comes Suleiman. Might have a little extra motivation tonight after being taken out of the starting lineup by Coach K. Suleiman has had a very difficult year. Didn't play at all in the Michigan game in the Big Ten ACC Challenge. And has really been inconsistent on both ends of the floor in practice. He has not played his best. Missed a three. Keel Mitchell the rebound. Why do you think that is, Jay? He had such a nice freshman year last year, Suleiman, 11 and a half points, three and a half rebounds. I'm not sure that he put his time in this summer and really worked as he would have expected to make the kind of jump you want in a really good player from a freshman to sophomore year, frankly. Good passing there in the half court. Mitchell dumped it underneath to Toby, who was fouled by Andre Dawkins. Second foul on Dawkins. And Mike Toby will go to the line. And Toby's made a really nice improvement, Sean, from last year to this. He had 16 points, seven rebounds against North Carolina State on Saturday, his best game of the year. Sophomore from Monroe, New York. More substitutes. <laughs> well, you can see Mike Krzyzewski wanting to keep the pressure on, keep everybody fresh. It looks like he, he thinks he's been playing some of his guys too much, and they've been pacing themselves, and clearly he doesn't want any of that in this game. Toby makes both. That's been a very difficult stretch for Coach K, not just the two losses in three games in conference play. Both games they had a comfortable lead it seemed in the second half led by 10 at Notre Dame and lost led by nine at Clemson in the second half Saturday and lost but much more troubling to Coach K the unexpected death of his brother Bill the day after Christmas Parker a miss. Nice offensive rebound by Emil Jefferson. We talked to Coach K before the game. Jay said the loss of his hero, his only sibling, brother Bill, really knocked him back, and you could sense the emotion still very raw for Coach K. Well, you can see it, and I had the pleasure of getting to know his brother Bill, just an amazing person. And I mean, this has clearly affected Mike Krzyzewski in a very profound way, and it's been very, very difficult on him. We talked about the problems. Facing Duke is hood deflected out of bounds. Coach K said, Well, we have a very young team, and it would help if I can get my act back together and help them. And you know that the death of his brother, 38 years in the Chicago Fire Department. Bill Krzyzewski. He was a captain in the Chicago Fire Department, never missed a day of work. Malcolm Brogdon to miss. Nice work on the offensive glass by Anthony Gill, who's come in off the bench. 
This little baseline runner, then a down screen for Malcolm Brogdon. And Anthony Gill did a nice job on the glass. And Duke is an undersized team. And this is a very good rebounding Virginia team. They're out rebounding their opponents by close to nine per game. And Duke getting out rebounded by over six per game, especially in conference play. Gill missed the first. The transfer from South Carolina sat out last year. Had a good freshman year at South Carolina two seasons ago. Seven and a half points, nearly five rebounds per game. At the Charlotte Christian High School in Charlotte, North Carolina, the same high school that produced Stephen Curry and Seth Curry. How do you like to go there? You can never be the all time leading scorer. <laughs> Well, you could have just scored more points than those guys. Yeah, that's like being the all-time leading scorer at the University of Cincinnati with Oscar Rowe. He got no shot. Jabari Parker. They came to double him, and he walked. That's another feature of the pack line defense. They will trap in the post with great regularity if they can. And once they come to trap, they don't want to let the ball out on the same side of the floor, and Parker when he picks the ball up just needs to be a little bit more patient he tried to get around and wound up walking. Ten games with 20 or more points for Jabari Parker including his first seven of the season the scoring's dropped off a bit lately they averaged 11 and a half points over the last four. Brogdon steps into a runner blocking foul called much to the chagrin of Coach K and the Cameron Crazies. Matt Jones came over from the weak side and did a terrific job of making Brogdon give the ball up. But you've got to get to that spot before the offensive player goes into his shooting motion or passing motion. It's to shoot or to pass. Just getting over there to make him give up that shot was victory enough for a, def uh, for a defender. You just don't want to pick up a foul. I was on Matt Jones is first and the team's fifth. Brogdon an excellent free throw shooter parenthesis is as well but the rest of the team is brutal. Those two combined for 87 percent the rest of the squad just a fraction under 61 percent. But it's a good thing they're five out of six from the line. Because from the field they're one for seven where well, they've survived that rocky start and they're back within three. Just a possession down. Evan Nolte into the ball game for Virginia. An outstanding perimeter shooter. He's a guy you have to make him put it on the floor. He's running mostly motion offense here, not really running the normal set plays that they've come to run throughout the course of the year. Looks like they're just trying to get more ball movement and not be quite as predictable. Jones trying to probe that defense. Shot clock running out. Hood a three wouldn't go. And a good offensive rebound. And right back to the basket went Emil Jefferson. That's really what Emil Jefferson needs to do to be an effective player is really hit the glass. He's averaging over eight rebounds per game in ACC play, six and a half on the season. That was the first basket of the game for Jefferson, slender sophomore from Philadelphia. Gill tried to avoid the contact from Parker, then missed the shot. Now Quinn Cook. Wide open Hood off the mark from three point land. Well, Hood missed that shot, but Jabari Parker was the one that made it possible because he ran the floor and cleared everything out. That's a three for Justin Anderson. Some of Virginia fans here celebrating the three by Justin, the sophomore. Now this is a tough Virginia basketball team. They're really difficult to speed up, and you have to speed them up on the defensive end. If you try to do it by taking quick shots on offense, playing five on five, it's going to be a time of possession game, like in football, and you're going to spend all your time on defense. Cook. Oh, what a good hedge by Anthony Gill. Again, they make the Blue Devils use almost the entire shot clock. Jabari Parker tried to rebound the miss by Hood, but lost it out of bounds. Well, at the first media timeout, Duke led eight to nothing. All of a sudden, it's twelve to ten. Coach K telling the crowd to get more involved. Black and white TV. You'd come into Cameron Indoor Stadium, and it was really small, really cramped, and incredibly hot. It was so hot, in fact, you had to pace yourself in warm-up so not to wear yourself out. But now it's air conditioned. 
these wimpy players now with their air conditioning and their long shorts and their color TV. Back in the old days, this place was tough. Well, coming from the man who wrote the book on toughness, I guess we have to acknowledge your expertise in that area. This will be the 365th consecutive sellout every home game since November of 1990. They've won 25 straight here. You're telling me this is air conditioned, huh? Well, we're, we're up at the top of the rafters. It's not quite as air conditioned up here. And to a guy who knows a lot about sellouts, you sell your partner out every broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> There's our perch. Taking me a little while to get used to working from up here again. It is a little warmer up here. The air conditioning is only a rumor. The view of the court is a rumor as well. A little pressure provided in the backcourt by Suleiman. And Duke really trying to get up and put pressure on Virginia, but thus far Virginia stayed low and has handled it. Toby missed a little hook. Out of bounds, last touch by Darion Atkins, who's come in off the UVA bench. Here's Janine. Well, guys, exactly what you were just talking about is what Virginia's been focusing on in that last timeout. Duke's pressure. They need to do a better job handling it and getting the ball, working the ball to the inside. That's what they're going to focus on this possession. And after the first few possessions, Janine, I think Virginia's done a really good job of it. They've just got to finish plays. Dawkins missed a runner. Well, this is not really a game that's going to be decided on forcing a lot of turnovers. I think Duke feels like if they can force Virginia a little further out on the floor, it gives them an advantage. Suleiman a three, then the lead back to five. Five points off the bench for Suleiman, averaging seven a game. Sophomore from Houston. Well, Duke's got a five point lead, but Virginia's got the pace that they want. And that was not the kind of shot that Tony Bennett wants off of one pass and it allowed Duke to get out a bit in transition and force Virginia to scramble back. Strong move to the bucket. Seven points for Suleiman. And Suleiman trying to get into the freshman Perantes from Los Angeles. Perantes did a really good job of handling pressure against Florida State, especially after Joe Harris went out. See, Virginia's not getting a lot of movement. Off the ball, they've got to get better screening and movement. Good hands on defense by Suleiman, and then he was fouled by Parentes. Well, Suleiman was replaced in the starting lineup by freshman Matt Jones, and a nice drive into the middle. Normally, Virginia would be in better gap protection position, and Parentes too late getting out to Suleiman on that three-point shot and then just having active hands out in the passing lane getting over the top of that flare screen if you put your arm out there you got a chance to get a deflection and Suleiman in the last three minutes has really done a nice job both on both ends for Duke and two fouls on Parentes so that's a concern starting point guard for UVA with foul difficulty eight and a half minutes to go first half To Hood. Again, the shot clock under 10. The Virginia stays so solid, they just make everything difficult. What a pass. Parker got it inside to Emil Jefferson. Four points. And this is the largest lead for Duke. From the elbow, the jumper popped out for Anderson. The offensive rebound. Chance to go to the free throw line. Good work on the glass by Darion Atkins. Jabari Parker essentially playing the five spot, and after that screen by Jefferson, he just shaped up to the rim. Totally couldn't get there. Duke by nine.
nice to see Seth Greenberg get a later time. He, you and he sort of battle for who can dominate the ESPN airwaves during the college basketball season. It's tough to get uh, get the microphone away from Seth Greenberg. He hangs on to it like a loose ball. There's a problem apparently down on the court. It's right under the basket. There's a piece of equipment that's just hanging from behind the basket. Well, Jay, if they were tough like you, they'd just play through that, would they not? Well, if I was down there, I could just jump up and fix it, but the mere mortals are going to have to get a ladder out. We'll take a quick break and come back to Cameron right after this. Media timeout. ESPN also live on Watch ESPN. Only four remaining undefeated teams after this weekend's action. Iowa State went down to defeat for the first time at Oklahoma. They'll be in action next against Kansas and Syracuse is at Boston College tonight. Wichita State is probably the only team with any realistic opportunity to rip through their league without a loss. Kind of like the opportunity that St. Joe's had several years ago. Uh, I, I don't see it happening even even with uh, not a lot of top 25 teams on their schedule because you go through the Missouri Valley Conference. I mean they were down 18 at Missouri State and, they won, came in back and won in overtime. I mean it's a, a great win for Wichita State but it's it is so difficult to go through a season uh, without a blemish. It helps them a little bit that Creighton is no longer in the Valley. Yes, you don't Creighton. think anybody's going through this league? Syracuse not going to run the table? Arizona? I would, I would be shocked if somebody did. I mean, obviously it's possible, but I would be really, really surprised. You can't have an off night shooting, and if somebody is uh, is killing it from the three point line, I just can't see it happening. I'm still fixing the piece of loose equipment behind the basket. Apparently, they have now fastened it down. But it gives us a chance to look at the standings. In some ways, they look upside down. The two newcomers from the Big East tied for the lead along with Virginia. And Duke and North Carolina a combined one and five in conference play. And North Carolina looked bad doing it Saturday at Syracuse. Scored 45 points, the lowest they've scored in the shot clock era. North Carolina is really scuffling right now. And Having a difficult time shooting the ball from the perimeter. Duke has gotten off to a shaky start. We expected both of those teams to be in the top five or six teams in the league. But boy, you look at those standings, and it really has a Big East feel. Not just with the Big East teams, but just looking at all the teams and the fact that so many of the teams play at a slower pace. I mean, if you looked at, at KenPom.com to adjust the tempo, you would find a, a, a large number of ACC teams are down in the bottom third of Division One in pace of play. Two free throws by Darion Atkins, who came into tonight just 44 percent for the year from the free throw line. Virginia staying in the game from the line, and the lob executed to perfection. Rodney Hood the finish, his first bucket. You have to respect Rodney Hood from the three point line and when he makes a move out there if you go over the top of a screen to meet him there which is what happened Jabari Parker able to pick off the defender and an easy lob. You see Rodney Hood down here he's going to come out and then cut back to the basket with a little back pick. That's really well done. If you don't get enough pressure on the ball, that pass is easily made. And at the defensive end, Jabari Parker just called for his second foul. And that puts Duke over the limit. It was a one and one opportunity for Justin Anderson, a 72% free throw shooter. And Hot Laley's been UVA's leading scorer in four of their last six games, missed the front end of the one and one. And Emil Jefferson ripped it away. Atkins went right over 13. the top of Jefferson. I don't think Jefferson got any contact on that blockout. And Atkins a good athlete and a very good offensive rebounder. And Raquel Mitchell, a little too frisky, picks up his foul in the fourth on the team. The officials are Mike Eads, Pat Driscoll, and Les Jones. 
Mitchell did just about everything right defensively. Moved his feet, stayed in front. He just had that right arm out. And when Parker did his rip through, he caught that arm and drew the foul. Mitchell's a really good defender. He can guard in the post. He can step away. And I think he's one of the only guys. I think Anderson can do it a little bit, but he's best suited to guard Jabari Parker, who I think is the most versatile big guy in the country. Found the bucket and a chance for a three-point play. Six points for Emil Jefferson. Just a simple handoff. Jefferson caught the ball, and Quinn Cook, the inbounder, just came off of him, and he slips to the basket. When Atkins helps up, that allows Jefferson to slip to the hoop. Atkins foul his first. Jefferson, the free throw shooter, 41% from the line for the year 18 for 44. The Duke has been good on the offensive end in this ball game, but what has staked them out to this 11 point lead has been their defense. You know, Virginia has not gotten anything easy. They haven't gotten an open shot there. They finally get something easy and don't finish. Malcolm Brogdon missed it. Well, the nice pass from Harris. Help Virginia if Harris to get some shots up. He's taken only two and missed them both. He's got to be more aggressive looking for his shot. Can't just be a blender. He's got to score for this team. Jefferson at the pass fake had it blocked by Gill. And goaltending is the call. Emil Jefferson with the left handed drive. I don't know if the ball hits the backboard you call it but you can block it into the backboard and Virginia's got to start finishing some plays they are getting the ball to the rim but they're not finishing plays finally they do Malcolm Brogdon the finish six minutes to go in the half Duke by 11 Emil Jefferson having a big first half for Duke eight points and six rebounds. He's done a really good job screening. When he has set a good screen, he's been able to go from screener to score and shape up and look for the ball. Quarter three for Parker wouldn't fall. Brogdon dribbling through the traffic all the way to the bucket. And he has six. He averages 10 per game. Their leading scorer for the year is Harris. And he averages just 10.7 points per game. You haven't had a, a team like Virginia that's had a, a leading scorer average that, that, you know, that few points in a long, long time. If, if he ended the year at 10.7 and led the team, it would be their lowest scoring average in their ACC history to lead the team in 61 years. Offensive foul called on Quinn Cook. His first. Virginia getting the ball out in transition, and nobody stops the ball. Nobody steps in front to contain and Brogdon able to get all the way to the rim really one of the the first really easy baskets that Duke has given up in this ballgame. Meanwhile another line change for Duke. Dawkins Suleiman Plumley, Thornton all back into the game for Coach K. And Josh Hairston has returned as well. And not sure what this stoppage is about. The officials over to the scores table for just a moment. And Sean, th this is a really important five-minute stretch to end the first half for Virginia. Now they're down nine points in this one. They've got the ball. But if they can score more efficiently going into halftime, they can put themselves in a position to make this a fist fight in the second half. But right now, with Duke playing with the lead. Now they have to feel a heck of a lot more comfortable than they felt in most of their ACC games. Virginia's lost 15 straight games here at Cameron. Gill fouled as he put the shot up. Fouled by Plumley, his first. That's really where Anthony Gill wants the ball, just at the elbow. Catches it at the elbow. They can run off for a handoff, but he can face up and drive it. Likes to drive to his right. 
65 percent free throw shooter. ESPN's journey to the tourney is our season long spotlight on games that will have significant impact on the NCAA tournament. We have one coming up for you right after this game. Number 15 Kansas and number eight Iowa State remains to be seen if DeAndre Kane a lot of people think to be a national player of the year candidate will play tonight. Poor Iowa State injured late in their win the loss rather at Oklahoma on Saturday is going to be a game time decision with that ankle injury. He transferred into Iowa State from Marshall where he played for Tom Harrion who was a former assistant to Pete Dillon here at Virginia. And Kane is having a, a terrific season. He's doing everything for Fred Hoiberg. Suleiman for a three. Well, this looks more like the Rashid Suleiman that we saw last season for Duke. Gill blocked by Plumley. Battling back is Plumley from foot surgery. There's a long two for Suleiman. He has 12, and Tony Bennett calls timeout. Rashid Suleiman getting a little bit of space, and when he does, he's been ready to shoot. Jones recovering late. And then in transition after the Marshall Plumley block and Plumley number 40 really runs the floor. A terrific screen here in transition by Josh Hairston to free up Rashid Suleiman. Well, I'll tell you, you gotta, you gotta, after you hit a shot, you gotta take a charge. Everybody's bumping. That's a foul. You know, Jay, there are a number of NBA scouts here tonight. I was talking with a couple of them down on the court before the game. And one of them made an interesting comment. He said, I still think Duke could win the national championship. He said, if I had to pick a team to win the national championship, I might pick Duke. After all, they have two lottery picks in Parker and Hood. And I said, well, who else do you like? And he said, well, I like Suleiman, but everybody's wondering what's going on with him. Last year, we really got on the radar of the NBA people. Uh, this year, they're kind of wondering what's happened. Well, I think he's got to find his way onto the floor and start playing well consistently at both ends. Yeah, he's got it in him. But he hasn't brought it out this season. So Mitchell trying to get the ball. He's got Tyler Thornton on him, and Virginia's not been able to get it to him. Kevin Jones is in off the UVA bench, number five, backup guard. Usually sees minutes late in the half. Joe Harris still scoreless. And it's tipped in. Is it going to count? Yes. But what a play by Akil Mitchell. Banged his head on the floor. Tremendous concentration by Mitchell. And he'll go to line with a chance for a three point play. Mike Krzyzewski was arguing for offensive basket interference. Timeout with 327 to go in the half. Entertaining night of basketball all over the place. Virginia down by 11. Keel Mitchell tried to finish the three point play. Virginia shooting just 28% from the floor for the half within 10. 3.20 to go. And a travel call. Is Tyler Thornton guilty of a walk? Fifth turnover committed by the Blue Devils. He's picked up his dribble, thought he had Suleiman, and Suleiman was defended a little too well coming off that curl. This is where Virginia needs to be a little bit tougher on the offensive end to get the shot that they want. I think Virginia's gotten some good shots and some good opportunities, but they've not finished those plays. Virginia picked to finish fourth in the preseason ACC poll. Duke uh, picked to win the league, then Syracuse and North Carolina. Toby missed from the elbow. And it's gathered in by Emil Jefferson. Nice job by Rodney Hood to shadow Joe Harris and stay with them. You'd rather have Mike Toby taking that shot than Harris, but Toby, that's a shot that Toby can and should hit. Jabari Parker again, they double in the post. 
Jabari's shot was blocked. This is not a good read by Parker. He should dribble out of that and pass opposite. Anderson. Brogdon, that's a deep two. It popped out. And it was rebounded by Quinn Cook. Again, Virginia getting open shots. At some point, you just have to knock them down, especially on the road. But they're hanging in there. Hood drove, and Brogdon was too close, bumping him the whole way. And this year, that's going to be a foul. See Rodney Hood just sticking with and right, trying to stay on the hip of Joe Harris and stand between him and the basket, forcing him to pass it off. And that elbow jumper, that's something that Mike Toby's got to hit. He's a a good face-up shooter. He's got a good touch. And you're not going to get much a much better shot than that in any offensive set. Rodgers follows his first, the team sixth. Sullivan's had a huge half, 12 points on five out of six shooting. Hood's open for three. Brogdon ran up, but he was a little late. Well, you do not want to leave Rodney Hood on the ball side. You help off on a drive on ball side, you are inviting a three or a shot fake in a drive. Hood comes in, having scored at least 20 in each of their last three games, and Harris finally has a field goal. His first points come from three-point range. See, that's the Joe Harris that I remember from last year, a guy who makes it really difficult on his defender. I mean, that was a beautiful jump shot. It's a terrific catch and shoot. And he gets his work done before he catches it. He's in perfect position to shoot it. Catches, he's got 10 toes pointed at the rim. And here's Suleiman. When Brogdon helps out on that drive, that is too long of a closeout to be able to get to a player that loads it up as quickly as Rodney Hood. And even if you do get out there a little bit quicker, Hood can just shot fake and go around you. Under a minute and a half to go in the half. Suleiman, no. Batted around and controlled by the Cavs. Anderson on the push. All the way to the basket. Pat Driscoll's calling it a blocking foul. Is he going to score the goal? Yes, he will. Got a chance for another three-point play. Aggressive move by Justin Anderson after getting the rebound, just taking it all the way. And if I think if Emil Jefferson had just simply held his position, I think it was trying to draw the charge on that that wound up drawing him the foul. Well, apparently they don't count the goal now. They're saying it's a two-shot opportunity. How could that not be a shooting foul? I have no idea. I don't think Pat Driscoll realized that it went in. And now the officials are conferring. Yeah, if it's a foul, it's a shooting foul. There's no question. Tony Bennett's out to the midcourt now signaling, isn't that a bucket? And he's being taken back to his bench by Mike Eads. I, mean, I don't see how you could call anything but a shooting foul there. Well, it's Pat Driscoll on the left of your screen who made the call. Mike Eads also had his armor for a foul, but it was Pat Driscoll who took control of going to the scores table and making the call. And now, after conferring, they did score the bucket. I'm not sure Pat realized that went in. So it's one shot for Anderson. And UVA, despite the poor shooting from the floor, back within seven as we approach a minute to go in the half. In the first half Saturday at NC State, they shot 60% from the floor and scored 48 points. Tonight, just 26 points in the first half. Well, this has been much more of a struggle for Virginia. But if, on the road, if the Cavs can handle this last one minute, well, they can come out of it in fairly decent shape. Well, they were impressive, Jay, Saturday, just down the road in Raleigh, 31 point loss, the worst at home for NC State since 1993. The biggest margin ever for UVA over NC State. Put a three, turned around, found himself wide open, let it fly and made it. But Virginia did everything there but grabbed the rebound, and the best time to shoot a three is off an offensive rebound, and Rodney Hood just made Virginia pay. That was a big, big play. After there's an offensive rebound, 
The defensive team has been thinking about taking it the other way, not thinking about playing more defense. That's the best time to fire a three. Harris fouled on a reach in. Boy, it looks like players on both teams, Virginia and Duke, have been showing a lot of hands and still getting fouls called. When that ball's knocked out, Malcolm Brogdon leaves the ball. You can never leave the ball. Just a, a poor decision by Brogdon and led to the three. Never, never, ever leave the ball. You never leave the ball. Even if he's 90 feet away from the hoop? If you're guarding the ball, you don't leave the ball, leave until, the ball. Instead of, until somebody bumps you off. Suleiman's foul is first. Harris made the free throw. He's 66 percent from the line. That's down significantly from a year ago when he was 74 percent. Janine mentioned the conversation New Year's Eve when Harris drove to Coach Bennett's house. Tony Bennett said you need leadership. You're a senior. Lead the team. You and Akil Mitchell you're both seniors. Take charge. This is your team. And it sounded like they got the message. They turned around won their first three conference games all by double digits. Two of them on the road. That's Florida State. And as we mentioned Saturday at NC State for the home win against Wake Forest in between. Time for a last second heave off the takeaway from midcourt. And it wouldn't go for Anderson. The largest Duke lead was 13 on a couple of occasions. They head to the locker room with an eight point edge. Led by Suleiman was yanked out of the starting lineup tonight. And Jefferson. Here's Janine. Coach Wojcikowski, it's always interesting to see how a team will respond after they get a tail kicking. What have you seen that you like so far? Well, our guys have played really hard. That's the thing we wanted to start off with. And uh, we've got contributions from everyone. We've great with great hunger and great passion. Well, you know that Virginia has a solid defense, and you know they're going to regroup in here at halftime. So what are you most wary of in this second half? Well, you got to beat a great team like Virginia, you got to play for 40 minutes. We know they're going to play really well in the second half. We have to come out with the same energy and effort we did in the first. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Tony Bennett said Duke will be a little ornery tonight after that loss at Clemson. They were a little ornery. They're up by eight over the Cavs. Now the Mazda halftime report with the coach, Seth and Jay. Welcome back to Big Monday presented by Verizon. It's the ACC on ESPN. Virginia trying to remain undefeated in conference play. The Cavaliers are 3-0 as they come to Cameron tonight to take on 23rd ranked Duke. At the half, the home team leads by eight. And Jay Virginia within eight despite the fact that the Cavs shot 30% in the first half. Mike Krzyzewski trying to shake things up after the tough loss on Saturday. Took Sheet Suleiman out of the starting lineup and might have sent him a message. Well, I think Duke has to feel, feel pretty well about what, the way they guarded in the first half to hold Virginia to 30%. But Virginia had some opportunities and weren't able to finish within seven, eight feet of the basket. They had some open shots. Duke did a really nice job on the offensive glass. Rashid Suleiman had 12 points. Emil Jefferson had eight points, seven rebounds. But Virginia, if they take care of the ball and finish plays, they're only down eight. Well, it's Cavalier ball to begin the second half. London Parentes, the freshman point guard, finds Joe Harris, and that's a three and a great way to start the second half for UVA. Eight points for the senior from Chelan, Washington. And Virginia won the free throw battle in the first half. They went 12 of 15. The free throw line really kept them in it. Tough shot by Parker, whose shooting woes continued in the first half. He was just one for five prior to the half. Hits his first shot of the second half. It's Duke by seven. That one for five start made him 12 of 40 in ACC play before he hit that one. That's just 30 percent. Mike Toby a miss. Akeel Mitchell there to follow. And Akeel Mitchell has played really hard in this game. He's been guarding Jabari Parker and doing a really nice job of it. And he's going to have to be more offensive minded. Matt Jones strong drive. He got knocked to the deck. And he'll shoot two. See Mitchell on the second shot doing a nice job and then Jabari Parker going behind his back a step back and even as a good a defender as Akeel Mitchell is that's awfully difficult to stop and Parker's got the ability to make those difficult shots the problem is he's been taking too many difficult shots since ACC play began.
A lot of people have speculated that Jabari Parker has hit a freshman wall. I'm not sure that's necessarily so, but he still is a, a young and inexperienced player, and I think his talent has trumped his inexperience in some cases. And you know, it's not easy to play against teams like Virginia that guard a, a different way and they make it really a possession by possession game. You don't have a lot of margin for error. Jones made one out of two. The foul was on Mike Toby, his first. It would certainly help Virginia in the second half if Toby would get more involved. He had just two points and no rebounds in 12 minutes in the first half after that big game Saturday at NC State. The Duke's getting beaten off the dribble a little bit too easily, but their help side has been pretty decent. Brogdon lost it out of bounds. Five turnovers for UVA. Here's Janine Edwards. Well, guys, Tony Bennett described the Blue Devils as, quote, ornery as heck in that first half. And for a team that really hasn't had much of an inside game, they've developed one in a hurry. So two things that the Cavaliers have to focus on in this half. Better defense, better communication on defense, and defensive rebounding, and then being more patient on offense. He said Duke's pressure has caused them to press a little bit. Meanwhile, Jabari Parker buries a three. And the lead nine the largest margin was 13 for Duke in the first half. And I don't know how Akeel Mitchell could have defended that any better. Rodney Hood grabbing Joe Harris on that but Mitchell was right on Jabari Parker. He just made a really difficult shot. A little down screen he gets around it. He went underneath that handoff but he was right there to pressure that shot. Now would it have been good if he went over. You're talking about a guy who's six eight going over the top of a handoff that's difficult to ask. Harris couldn't finish. Toby doing some work and finally gets one to go. His first field goal of the night. Four points for Toby. Nice job by Toby is sticking with that. It would be easy after you miss a shot like that. You don't finish to just give up on the play. And then Harris anticipated that pass. A pull up three. Neil Jefferson the rebound there were two Cavaliers with good position for the offensive rebound and went over their heads. Parker feeling it perhaps a bit too much. Yeah that's what people call a heat check which translated means bad shot. <laughs> Toby juggled it but got it back. Brogdon asking for a screen from Mitchell and got it and used it to hit the runner. If Virginia moves the ball from side to side and then drives it. They're going to have much more success. You drive it off the initial side and you're driving into a set defense. They're playing offense it seems a little more intensity and purpose Virginia here in the second half. They didn't trail Saturday at NC State. UVA has never led the night but they're within five and a chance to get closer. As Harris rebounded the miss. Well, really, the difference, Sean, in my judgment, is Virginia's been finishing plays in the second mm -hmm. half. You know, they're getting the ball near the basket and they're making it. That shot that Joe Harris took in transition, that three, I thought that was a good shot. You want to see him be that aggressive, so he's got to be guarded. Mitchell trying to probe along the edge of the lane. His shot was a little too strong. Run down in the corner by Emil Jefferson. Another Quinn Cook and now Jabari Park. Another play where Virginia doesn't finish. Duke didn't foul. Gave him an opportunity to miss it. They challenged without fouling. The runner wouldn't go for the freshman Matt Jones out of DeSoto, Texas. Quinn Cook is down. They, they're playing five on four now. Ren just passed up a three. They're still really five on four. Cook is hurt. Shot was blocked underneath as Mitchell tried to go up. And it's last touch by Duke, says Pat Driscoll. Crowd doesn't like the call. Cook still limping around. Tony Bennett wanted a foul underneath. Everybody's unhappy. Especially me. Well, that's nothing new. <laughs> Looked like a clean block there by Jefferson. And he was out of bounds when he touched the ball. Turned his right ankle. But Janine Edwards tells us during the timeout, he told the Duke training staff he's okay and he is not getting any attention. 
from their medical personnel right now. Virginia Ball there within five. Mitchell underneath Toby wide open. Virginia ran a little screen for the screener action. Duke did some switching. Marshall Plumley wound up on Joe Harris out on the perimeter. And that opened up Toby underneath. Virginia really executing well and out of bounds under. Ben Cook on the bench for the moment. Duke's leading assist man. Sulem on a strong drive. And he steps in, just rips it away. But what a play by Rashid Suleiman. Akil Mitchell was looking to make an outlet. Brought the ball down instead of chinning it and keeping his elbows out. And Suleiman just reached in. And instead of tying it up, he just took it away from him. It's like one of those defensive backs trying to knock the ball away from a ball handler, a ball carrier, excuse me, in football. It was interesting to hear so many of the Duke players after the loss at Clemson Saturday talk about a lack of toughness. Mike Krzyzewski made the point that they're not a physically strong team. It's a young team. They don't have a lot of big strong bodies. Yeah, that was a strong and tough play Suleiman just made. Well and, and the toughness goes beyond just the physical side of it. You know being tough enough to set up your cuts and get open deliver the ball. They're tough enough to run good offense when you're getting pressured and that's what Virginia has shown much better in the second half and they finished some plays. Foul was on Brogdon his second and he's gone to the bench so Virginia playing without its second leading scorer and rebounder for the year in Malcolm Brogdon. Tyler Thornton's up tight on Harris. Perent is wide open for an 18 footer and over the back was Mike Toby. ESPN brings you a primetime NBA doubleheader Wednesday at 8. The rookie out of Michigan, Trey Burke. And the Utah Jazz squaring off against Tony Parker and the Spurs. Then at 10 30, Ty Lawson and the Nuggets. Kagan, Stephen Curry, and the Warriors. NBA Wednesday is presented by State Farm, and it starts with key NBA countdown at 7 30 on ESPN. Of course, both games also live on Watch ESPN. But the Golden State Warriors are so much fun to watch. To watch Stephen Curry and Clay Thompson run off so many screens and the way they shoot the ball, they are really fun. Now Duke running primarily motion offense here, setting some ball screens, but there's not really set plays that they've been running. Suleiman had trouble on the dribble. Hairston has to shoot it. It's a shot clock violation. And the eighth turnover committed by Coach K's Blue Devils. Well, Mike Krzyzewski asking for a foul. He thought that Justin Anderson jumped right on top of Rashid Suleiman when he went down. But just good hustle by Anderson, whether it was a foul or not. You have another line change. A complete new five is coming in. I don't think Mike Krzyzewski's made a, a single substitution. It seems five at a time the whole game. This is Dean Smith. Used to send them in to the scores table and waves. And he's going to change all five, perhaps, at this whistle. Well, he's clearly trying to keep everybody fresh. Doesn't want anyone pacing themselves. And you know, Quinn Cook, to this point in the year, has played 36, 37 minutes a game. He's up in the top five in the ACC in minutes played per game. And by playing him a little bit fewer minutes. Or maybe Coach Mike Krzyzewski thinks that he can you know, get better and more sustained effort from his entire team. And as you see, he is back in there after turning his ankle a moment ago. The foul on Plumley was his second. Good execution again. Mitchell about to throw it down. He was fouled that denied the bucket, but he'll have two free throws. Yeah, Rodney Hood fouled him and just a little screen and slip to the basket when Parker helps up. Rodney Hood had to come over, otherwise, that ball was going to be punched. He almost finished the play anyway with a, a hard foul. Three fouls on Hood. Whoa. Mitchell. Needs a little less club. Boy, the free throw line was really the friend of Virginia in the first half. I think Duke shot only four free throws. Virginia shot what, 15. You know what made me think of the golf analogy? I you know, was watching tonight. Kevin Streelman, a proud Dukey, one of the great players on the PGA Tour. A fine golfer. 
I bet he gives his friends putts when they're within four feet. <laughs> In fact, he does. Unlike some Dukies I know. <laughs> Could have played golf here today. It was a beautiful day here in the triangle. Temperatures in the mid 60s. Warm inside. Cameron Indoor Stadium. Duke trying to win its 26 straight home game. Virginia trying to win here for the first time since 1995. That was also the last time they started 4 0 in the ACC. Akil Mitchell trying to stay in front of Jabari Parker on that drive. There's just a reach in. And he gave it to Evan Nolte, was also there trying to rip it away, his first foul. And Mitchell's done a really nice job of moving his feet and keeping his hands off of Parker. It is so difficult when you're playing a guy that can really drive it. You want to take away that shot. Oftentimes your reflex is to put your arm out. Hood scores. Coach K left him in with the three fouls. That's 10 now for Rodney. He had 27 Saturday at Clemson. He had uh, 20 Saturday at Clemson. He had 27 in each of the two games prior to that. He's out of Georgia Tech here in the loss of Notre Dame. Well, what a defensive play by Emil Jefferson. They're in really good defensive position. Mitchell was about to score, and that just threw his rhythm completely off to where he almost walked. Jabari Parker long with a three and the long rebound run down by Jefferson. Under 12 and a half to go. Duke by seven. That's 12 rebounds for Jefferson. He has been absolutely terrific. Played with great energy. But there have been some rebounds where Virginia has had the opportunity to get them, and they have not. Cook. It popped out to Akeel Mitchell. Mitchell was the leading returning rebounder in the ACC this year. Averaged nine a game last year. And the seventh leading scorer. His scoring's way down. 13 plus last year. Six and a half this year. But part of that is a little more depth on the Virginia team this season. The addition in particular of Gill. Hood. Fouled. He'll shoot two from the line after immediate timeout. Uh, Rodney Hood has been outstanding in ACC play, averaging almost 25 a game, shooting 59% from three. But this showing with the left hand, he's left-handed going inside instead of outside. Against a dangerous BC team, Jay, that's had a very disappointing season for Steve Donahue. Syracuse number two behind Arizona. They're one and two in the poll for the sixth consecutive week. And they're going to have to deal with Olivier Hanlon, a guy who has shot more free throws than just about anybody in the country. Just a, a terrific player and a terrific scorer. But when you guard Hanlon, you have got to keep him off the free throw line. Rodney Hood made the first free throw 11 points for the transfer from Mississippi State. Where he played one year and was on the SEC all freshman team when he averaged 10 points and five rebounds a game. Virginia had it within five four unanswered points for Duke and the margin back to a more comfortable nine with 11 and a half to go. But Virginia really having to start their offense further out on the floor with Duke's pressure. Now this may not be a great Duke defensive team but this is as well as Duke has played defensively since they played Michigan earlier in the year. Rashid Suleiman called for the foul. That's one of those points of emphasis this year. It was interesting talking to Coach K before the game. We talked earlier in the telecast. Jay wanted to press early in the year, but thought it was hard to do with the emphasis on the hand checking and freedom of movement. But he thinks the officials have backed away from that slightly as we've moved toward conference play. Brogdon scores inside. That sort of echoes a comment I heard our Dan Dockich make on the air the other night. And I know John Adams, the coordinator officials for the NCAA, has been after his men to not back off and continue to be attentive to it. I don't think anybody wants to see touch fouls called. 
But, you know, for those who lament the quote unquote new rules, this has always been in the rule book. It just hadn't been in the specific rules. It's been in all the interpretations. But, you know, I would ask, well, make a case for why a defender should have his hands on a ball handle. Mm -hmm. There really isn't a good case. And nobody's arguing that incidental contact should be called. But I think if you look at how the game has gone over the last 10 years or so, uh, there are hands all over people. And it's, it's become a clutch and grab game. Joe Harris called for his second foul. Hood gets a breather. One out of two from the line for Matt Jones. Four points. He didn't score in any of their three ACC games. A deep bench player thrust into starting lineup tonight with Coach K trying to shake it up. It was interesting to hear Coach K describe it. So he said he liked the emphasis on taking away the hands on the dribbler, the arm bar, and all that kind of stuff that's been so much of a focus this year. The backdoor cut denied as Anderson's pass was intercepted. And that right there was the difference in the game. The ball was on the floor. Mike Toby and Andre Dawkins both had a chance. That was a legit 50 50 ball, a loose ball. Dawkins dove on it, was first to the floor, and he got possession. Nice job by Tyler Thorne to knock that away. The pass wasn't very good, but, you know, Toby's a terrific player. But that's one of those where the guy that's first to the floor is going to win possession of the ball. Now, Duke happened to have the arrow. They just finished the point by what Coach K was saying. He likes that they're trying to clean up the game. He said, but it doesn't need to go all the way to prohibition, <laughs> which I thought was an interesting description. Thought it had gone a little bit too far trying to clean up some of the physical stuff. Nearly midway through the second half. Shot clock at five. And another three for Rashid Suleiman. 18 points. But he has been a different player. This Rashid Suleiman has not shown up until tonight. He has played extraordinarily well. Toby on the offensive glass missed the shorty as it rolled off. If Virginia could just make their layups, this would be near a tie game. Mm -hmm. you know, they have had so many opportunities within five, six feet of the basket, and they haven't been able to finish these plays. Suleiman, the season high was 20, and that was in their opener against Davidson and they scored 111 points a lot of people thought wow Duke's really going to benefit from that freedom of movement more of a flow in the half court offensively Dawkins fouled on the drive yeah, that Suleiman game. had scored in only uh, four games in double figures since prior to tonight well that game against Davidson the first of the year Duke shot as a team close to 70 percent it was just an amazing shooting performance but as well as Suleiman played in that one going for 20 points he didn't play nearly as well as he's played in this one. Justin Anderson called for a second foul that put the Cavaliers over the limit. And Duke with only four team fouls in the second half that means going down the stretch the Blue Devils can continue to be aggressive defensively without fear of putting Virginia on the line which they did in the first half they put Virginia on the line quite a bit Dawkins outstanding free throw shooter better than 86 percent entering tonight he made a pair and the lead is back to the largest of the night for Duke 13 with 9 15 to go look how far Virginia's got to go out to catch the ball Brogdon looked like a goal 10 it is a goal 10 called against Emil Jefferson and Malcolm Brogdon has 12. You know, Virginia has faced a, a better Duke defense in this ball game, but I'm not sure it's faced a really rabid crowd. This has not been a loud crowd. All the energy that's been brought by Duke has been brought by the players, not necessarily the crowd. First bad Still shot he's short. Taken. That was a bad one. are in session here at Duke. UVA's 
start its semester today back in Charlottesville. Mitchell fouled on a reach in by Tyler Thorne, but he probably saved the bucket and will make Nikhil Mitchell earn the two at the free throw line. When Virginia's gotten the ball inside, they've gotten some good things. Get the ball into Toby down. He's a pretty good passer. And Mitchell, just as he's done a couple times when the ball's gone inside, he's just dove right to the rim and has gotten something really good. Seven points tonight for Mitchell, the senior from Charlotte. Last year in Charlottesville against Duke, he had 19 points and 12 rebounds. As Virginia ended an eight game losing streak head to head against Duke. Another line change for Jacques Lemaire on that Duke bench. Every, everything but a penalty box in this one. I think we're in the penalty box up here <laughs> in the song. Whoa, Akil Mitchell's one for five from the free throw line. And he's had a variety of misses. He's 46% for the year coming in. He had a game earlier this year at Green Bay back in early December. Jay went six out of seven from the line. And since then he is seven for 27. So apparently that game was a fluke. Well he's clearly not a good free throw shooter but he has done some really good things in this game. His defense has been really good on Jabari Parker. He's rebounded very well. Just like you to accentuate the positives at all times. Our first big Monday of the season. Hood with the shot clock running out, lays it in 14. So he has a shot at his fourth consecutive game of 20 points or more. Timeout, Virginia. Tony Bennett didn't want to wait for the immediate timeout, which would have come on the next whistle. And the fans saying, "Take this noise, Jay Billis." <laughs> Rodney Hood. Has pushed the lead back to 13. Time for tonight's Did You See That? Brought to you by Verizon. And did you see the play of Rashid Suleiman? The young man who didn't start in this ballgame. Freshman Matt Jones took that starting spot at his position. And he has been terrific on both ends of the floor. 17 points, three of four from three point range. His defense has been solid. He's been in and out of the starting lineup this year, out of it tonight. He's really been in and out of the lineup, period. Yes. I mean, he didn't play at all. Had a DNP coach's decision against Michigan in the Big Ten ACC Challenge. It's been a really difficult year for the, the sophomore from Houston. That was a game won by Duke here in early December. Beat Michigan by 10. Virginia got within three here in the second half. And all of a sudden it's back to a 13 point lead for Duke. Anderson a tough shot. Off the hands of Hood run down by Quinn Cook. Duke defended Joe Harris very well there. Hood and Suleiman did a nice job of switching. A screen along the baseline. And Hood, has, or excuse me, Harris has not been able to find any openings in the second half. Got that first shot off in the in the second half, and that's been about it. Jabari Parker a miss. Seven minutes to go. Well, Sean, one thing when you play a team like Virginia, but especially when you play Virginia. You're not getting your normal shots in your normal rhythm. It is really a difficult game rhythm wise. That's what basketball is about. Establishing your rhythm and disrupting your opponent's rhythm. Harris nice move along the baseline. Ten points right on his average for Joe Harris. Well, that was a nice job by Joe Harris of keeping his poise along the baseline. Well, you have really got to stay between your man and the basket when you're in a situation like that. If he throws the ball back out, so what? Cook working on Harris. Nice job by Cook to keep his dribble there. Tough shot by Hood with the play clock running down. 
Shot clock was about to run out. Virginia hanging in there a couple times tonight. Looked like Duke might be on the verge of really pulling away. Problem is they're running out of time. And they're not a team that really scores typically in flurries. Fouls on Hood, his fourth. And that gets us to a timeout. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Verizon. Holiday savings on the gifts everyone wants. Watching tonight, Gerald Henderson of the Charlotte Bobcats. Night off. He made the two hour drive over from Charlotte to watch his old team. Among the Duke basketball players I have played golf with, and that isn't many, he is by far the best. I know you like to think you are, but he's way better than you. Well, he's a scratch golfer. His dad's a great golfer, too. Virginia ball down 11, under six minutes to go. Duke did a nice job switching every screen and exchange on that out of bounds under. And Virginia's going to have to find a way to generate some points. They have not gotten much in the half court. Harris's pass was deflected. Five and a half minutes to go. Parentes scores his first basket of the night. The freshman from Los Angeles playing in this hostile environment. Tony Bennett didn't think his point guard would be rattled. He said London is California cool. He's not really turned the ball over much. That hasn't been the issue for Virginia. It's just been their ability to knock down challenge shots within five, six feet of the basket, even open jump shots that they've had. They haven't been able to knock them down. Another three. Quinn Cook, his first bucket of the night. Off a very poor shooting game Saturday at Clemson when he went three out of 14 from the floor. Really, in ACC games, everybody but Rodney Hood's been shooting about 30% for Duke. Nice drive by Joe Harris. Great strength. And Quinn Cook just spotting up off this penetration by Rodney Hood. Parentes just got into the gap and couldn't recover. And this is just strength on strength. Nice job using the basket to avoid a blocked shot. That's one of the things. Joe Harris needs to do that's drive the ball more he's so strong and he's such a threat to rise up and shoot a jumper that can open up a lot of drives. And he has Virginia back within nine the foul on Matt Jones is third both teams are over the limit now with four and a half to go. Duke really spreading the floor and they're just running motion there's no set play call here. Cook, nice drive along the baseline the finish inside and a timeout called by Mike Krzyzewski. Well, an interesting contrast. Janine Edwards talked about Virginia going towards more structure when Joe Harris went over to Tony Bennett's house. And after a couple of losses in conference, it looks like Duke trying to open things up and go away from their set play offense and go with more motion. More great basketball Thursday night. Our Thursday night showcase on the networks of ESPN at 7 on ESPN. It's UConn against. Chris Crawford of 17th ranked Memphis and then at nine on ESPN 2 Aaron Kraft in Ohio State suffered a couple of losses this week square off with Minnesota Gophers almost had a big win at Michigan State over the weekend right. Connecticut right. Memphis at seven that's on ESPN Ohio State Minnesota at nine ESPN 2 Thursday night presented by Reese's peanut butter cups in both games live on watch ESPN Richard Patino has really done a nice job with that Minnesota program had he in his first yes. year there. Not a surprise either. And you talk about great coaching jobs. Fran McCaffrey at Iowa. I was shocked to hear one of our colleagues on the air the other day have him listed as a coach on the hot seat. Are you kidding me? The job that he has done at Iowa. Brogdon. Good work. Virginia down by 11, attacking the offensive glass. And they'll shoot some free throws with 4.05 to go. And Virginia attacking the basket, but. At some point, you got to knock down these shots and basically lay up range. I, mean, I don't know exactly, Sean, what the count is, but it's got to be getting near double figures of shots within five, six feet of the basket. 
that Virginia has simply not punched in and not finished. Well, it's happened every time that you've mentioned it, it would be about 30. <laughs> <laughs> Toby the free throw shooter 67 percent of the year from Monroe New York near Rochester but went to Blair Academy in New Jersey. What do you think about Virginia picked fourth in the ACC tied for first with Syracuse and Pitt entering tonight all of them three and all oh, enough to be a contender. I like conference? their team. I don't. I don't think they're gonna. They're gonna win the conference. I think Syracuse is the best team in the league. But I think it's a top five, top six team. That means an NCAA tournament team. Like Virginia got off to a, a little bit of a shaky start and did not play the way they wanted to play early on in the non-conference season. Lost an early game to VCU. And, but this is a this is a good basketball team that's starting to play the way they like to play. Cook got bumped. We'll have a chance to get the lead back to double figures after the media timeout. All right, Coach, thank you. Here tonight's Wendy's Wooden Watch. We keep an eye on contenders for the Wooden Award to the best player in the country. And Jabari Parker with eight points tonight. Another rough shooting night for the freshman. Well, the first 12 games, it would be hard to argue that there was a better all-around or more versatile player in the country than Jabari Parker. He has tailed off or tapered off in his last four and had some difficulties. But I think right now the the wooden award begins and ends with Creighton's Doug McDermott. He's been phenomenal. Okay, let's just call it off then. No more Wendy's <laughs> wooden watch. Jay has spoken. Jabari Parker, by the way, opened the season with seven straight 20-point games. The last freshman to do that anywhere in college basketball was Kevin Durant for Texas. He turned out all right. It was back in 2006-07. Meanwhile, Quinn Cook was scoreless for the first 35 minutes of this game. He has now scored Duke's last seven points. And their lead is 11. 335 to go. And a big three. They needed it. And they got it from Justin Anderson. Timeout called by Tony Bennett. It looked like Perantes was in some trouble along the baseline but was just able to pull up and get that ball to Anderson and he did not hesitate if he hesitated just a bit Suleiman would have gotten out to it. He who hesitates has a shot block. Conference play continues Super Tuesday tomorrow. I know it's a player you really like Sam Decker there that fell on the top left of Wisconsin still undefeated. They take on Indiana at nine the SEC matchup Kentucky and Arkansas Super Tuesday doubleheader both games on ESPN and live on watch ESPN Well, that Wisconsin Indiana game what a contrast Indiana has had difficulty taking care of the ball they have a really high turnover rate and Wisconsin only turns the ball over when you hit him with a two by four <laughs> that should be a foul sometimes with it is <laughs> with the new emphasis yeah, it should always be a foul the old John Adams will want that called every time. Yeah, the old timers don't like it. They want to let the kids play. Duke the ball in an eight point lead. Trying to get to two and two in conference. You mentioned earlier, Jay, early in the season, but a big game for both teams. UVA trying to firmly establish itself as a contender. Also could use a resume helping win with an eye toward getting back to the NCAA tournament for the second time in five years under Tony Bennett. Duke doesn't want to get too far behind those undefeated teams at the top. Syracuse 3 0, Pittsburgh 3 0, UVA 3 0 starting the night. Pitt took a blow over the weekend. Durant Johnson, their fine sixth man, season any knee injury. That'll hurt Jamie Dixon's team. Yeah, it hurts their depth. But Pittsburgh 
Yeah, the only loss was in the Garden to Cincinnati in that game that was what 44 to 43. But Lamar Patterson, the senior, what a terrific player. I'm not sure there's a better big man passer in the country. One and one opportunity now for Duke. The next one to be two shots. And the front end missed by Cook. And Virginia still hanging in there within eight. Well, Virginia got away with one there. That was not a smart foul to the clock by Akil Mitchell. Toby, one on one. Jefferson did a good job, but Anderson snuck in, tipped it in, and was fouled by Suleiman. Well, Toby had single coverage going to the bucket, and Anderson, who just hit that last three, just runs right in from the wing, shoves off Suleiman, has inside position, and Suleiman just right underneath him to pick up that foul. What a great play. And that was with the right hand. Anderson's left handed. What a terrific play. And no doubt about the foul, even though Suleiman protested his third foul. Nine fouls on each team. It'll be two shots from here on out. Anderson gets them back to within five in plenty of time. 12 points off the bench for Anderson. And you can feel the anxiety in the crowd. And now for Virginia, it's just about staying solid. Ooh. Suleiman almost walked as he picked up his dribble, nearly dragged his foot. He's in trouble, and it's stolen by Harris. Breakaway layup. And they're as close as they've been in the second half. Back to within three, 2-10 to go. I don't know why Suleiman didn't call a timeout there. Mike Krzyzewski will. Looked like Mike Krzyzewski is telling Pat Driscoll he was asking for a timeout from the bench. But Suleiman should have called that himself. The last thing you want to do is just jump up in the air and throw the ball up for grabs. He was in trouble. You get in trouble, call a timeout. Now you can see Krzyzewski over on the sidelines making the timeout move with his hands. But nobody saw it. Boy, what a big play by Joe Harris. 8-0 run for UVA over the last minute and 16 seconds. Looked like this one was in the win column for Duke. Not so fast, my friend, as one of our colleagues might say. How about Virginia hanging in there? Not surprising. It's not surprising, but you, know, you certainly have to acknowledge that when you miss as many shots, you have as many opportunities they've had and you don't finish, that sometimes some teams will pack their backs. Yeah, no so they did not do it. And it's one of the things that Tony Bennett talked to Joe Harris about in that conversation at his home on New Year's Eve. The need to play with constant intensity that wants to be, from Tony Bennett, the trademark of his program. That's what he's preaching nonstop. Big possession now with game pressure on Duke. Hood guarded by Harris, and the shot clock goes under 10. Hood trying to take Harris one on one. Desperation three for Parker. And the long rebound snatched by Brogdon. And now a three would tie it for Virginia. They trailed eight to nothing. They have not caught Duke, nor have they ever taken the lead in this game. Strong to the bucket. Brogdon will have a chance to tie it at the line. And getting beaten off the dribble. What a great defensive possession by Virginia, followed up by a very good offensive possession. Suleiman just beaten off the dribble. Nobody seeing the ball. Rodney Hood had his back to the play on the weak side. And Brogdon just went right into the body of Jabari Parker. And that play, Virginia finished. Brogdon, outstanding free throw shooter, ties it. 15 points for the red shirt sophomore from Norcross, Georgia. 63 apiece. Boy, what guts by Virginia in this comeback. Good. Trying to go one on one. Last possession on Harris. It didn't work. Officials allow a little bumping. Hood looked at Mike Eads as if to say, I thought that's supposed to be a foul in this day and age. One minute to go. Under 10 on the shot clock. Suleiman's had a big night. He's fouled on the drive. Forced his way into traffic and drew the whistle from Les Jones. 
Fouls on Brogdon, his third. Both teams in the double bonus. A pair for Suleiman, 78% for the year, two for two tonight. Trying to end an 11 0 run for the Cavaliers from the University of Virginia. Way short. Well, Virginia make or miss can get something quickly and really make this a two for one down the stretch. You don't want to take just anything, but I don't think you want to hang back and burn clock either. You want to be aggressive trying to get a score. And they've had some success over the last couple minutes putting the ball on the deck and driving it. UVA with a chance to take its first lead of the night trying to end a 15 game losing streak here at Cameron. That was an overtime win that got them to 4 0 in the ACC in 1995. The last time they were 4 0. A win would get them there tonight. Brogdon fouled hard. And he'll have a chance to give them the lead with. 36 and a half seconds to go. Well, Tyler Thornton fell down trying to guard Malcolm Brogdon. He took advantage of it, put it on the deck, and was able to draw that foul. Brogdon's been one of the best free throw shooters in the country this year. Three for three tonight. He is 37 out of 41 for the year. Two shots. Well, Brogdon's had a terrific basketball game, not just on the offensive end. He's played really good defense throughout the course of this game. This for Virginia's first lead of the night. 17 for Brogdon. Has been their leading scorer overall in their three ACC games prior tonight, averaging just less than 13 points per game. What a comeback by UVA here in the last couple of minutes. And they did it on the defensive end. Justin Anderson knocking a shot down, then this just amazingly acrobatic tip in with the right hand, the left hander. And then the defense has been solid throughout the second half. Taking advantage of the mistake by Rashid Suleiman Brogdon taking the ball to the basket right after that and finishing. Boy, the guts that Virginia has shown in this game, their first three games, because they played so well in ACC play, were blowouts and easy. And this one, getting the lead with 36.5 seconds to go in regulation, has been anything but. They lost by 35 at Tennessee on December 30th. Tony Bennett had the heart to heart with Jay Harris. And now they could be 36 and a half seconds away from their fourth straight ACC win. As you said, Jay, the first three all by double figures. This one, they might just eke out. They're on a 13 to 1 run over the last 255 to take their first lead of the night. What does Duke do now with this possession? I think they attack. You, you can't just hold the ball for a long period of time. I think you got to take something quick. They've been running mostly motion throughout the course of the game. I'm almost certain there'll be a set play call here. Virginia has the arrow, the possession arrow. So if it's a tie up, Virginia gets it. You run the clock down of your Duke or take your first really good shot. I think you take your first good look. You run a little baseline runner flare opposite. Good, got a good look. Well short, might have been tipped. Suleiman for three. Got the bounce. Two point lead for Duke. No timeout, yes timeout. The last used by Tony Bennett. Whoa, what a bounce. The comforts of home. And Suleiman, the young man that missed one of those two free throws just a little bit earlier and again. The best time to shoot a three on an offensive rebound. Terrific kick out.
Very fortunate bounce. High off the rim, almost up to the shot clock. He wanted it for a while. They finally found him. He has a season high, 21 points. Six shy of his career high in this building last February against Boston College. He's made four out of five from three. No timeouts left for Virginia, so job one is get it in. Then what? Get it in, and they've had some success driving the ball. Now you don't have to take anything off the first side. Mike Krzyzewski wants a timeout to talk about his defense. You take your shot for three and a win. Well I think you drive it and if you collapse the defense and can, can get out for a three you take that open three. Mm -hmm. But Virginia's had some really good success in putting the ball on the floor and driving the ball. And in fact that that's been a difficulty for Duke is guarding the dribble. And I think you take advantage of that and put them in a position to foul. You're not going to get anybody in a position to foul just by taking a jump shot unless you kick it out. Virginia trying to go to four and oh and remain atop the ACC Syracuse just getting underway in Boston against the Eagles Pittsburgh in its first year in the ACC three and oh and right now Sean an offensive rebound is a huge play now Virginia doesn't have to worry about defensive balance to get back they can send all five guys to the glass so everybody has to block out in this kind of play. Brogdon played it into Akeel Mitchell, and he threw it away. Then they got it back. Harris to the bucket. No! Jefferson was fouled at 6.8 to go. I don't know what the rush was there for Akeel Mitchell when he got the ball along the baseline. There was nothing there. Mitchell catches the ball, and they look like they were trying to set a little flare screen to get Joe Harris open along the baseline but it wasn't there. Yeah it was a design play Jay and it just looked like he was anticipating somebody was going to be in the lane and the cutter hadn't arrived there yet. But the, with that much time you don't have to take the first option. Right. Two shots now for Jefferson 0 for 1 from the line and a brutal free throw shooter. And right on cue he drains it 41 percent for the year. Now the issue is does Duke foul. If you make this free throw. Excuse me if you miss this free throw do you foul. It's a it's a three point game now this would make it a two possession game if you knock this down but if you miss this do you foul. I think teams should for the most part. Yeah I, th I think you wait till it gets across half court mm -hmm. and you give it. Now if you make this free throw it doesn't matter. And a 41 percent free throw shooter make two. Yes. Another very friendly bounce through a brick off the back of the rim. Even he's smiling as that one trickled in. And now Coach K telling his team absolutely no fouls with the four point lead. Brogdon shoots the three and Duke is going to survive. Gutsy comeback by Virginia and gutsy finish by Duke. Well, Virginia heartbreaking defeat. They've now lost 16 straight in this building. Final score is Duke 69 and Virginia 65. For Janine Edwards, Jay Billis, and our terrific crew, led ably by our producer, Bo Garrett, our director, Jeff Evers, Sean McDonough, so long from Durham, now to Ames, to Brett Musburger, and Fran Prashella.